You are listening to the Mortgage Impact Podcast. My name is Jen Bates, the Communications Manager for Movement Mortgage, and very excited today to be joined by Dr. Jessica Louts with the National Association of Realtors. Dr. Louts is the Vice President of Demographics and Behavioral Insights, and I'm really intrigued to get your thoughts on, on what's going on in the market today, Dr. Louts. So thank you so much for being on here this morning. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Very cool. All right, let's get into your background a little bit and what it is you do for the NAR. Yeah, absolutely. So I've actually been at NAR since 2007. Um, definitely an interesting time to start in 2007, but it's an interesting market now. Um, I don't think that that could be underlined perhaps even more than it is that we are in unprecedented times. Um, but my background really is research. I love it. I love uh, studying uh, how the demographics in America are moving, how that's changing home buying, or members are embracing it. So it's a really fun time to be working here. Yeah, it's an absolutely interesting time because what we saw at the beginning of the year, you had very low interest rates still, but then COVID happened. And so people were stuck at home and rapidly the government was trying to figure out how to still do housing when people weren't allowed to go outside. People weren't allowed to be around each other. Everything was staying at home. So we know the data right now is telling us that Q1 and Q2 might be a little bit uh, rough. <laughs> and when we're looking at the existing home sales now, um, that the numbers might be a little bit uh, misleading in a way. So explain to us what's happening right now in the market as compared, you know, because of what happened with COVID. When we see these numbers come out, what are we going to see? Yeah, absolutely. So existing home sales is a great figure. We love existing home sales. It's our bread and butter that we do put out on a monthly basis. That being said, it really is a backward looking figure. It's a lagging indicator because we know that those buyers, they already toured homes, they put contracts on homes, they dealt with the competition that was in the market at that point, and now they're looking at closing it. So maybe that's 30, 60 days out from when they were even looking. And if we think 30 to 60 days ago, it really was a rough patch in the US economy. Right now though, the market is absolutely heating up. Our members quickly pivoted they went to technology, they embraced virtual tools, and buyers and sellers were right along for the ride, excited to use this information, these tools. And so we actually see there's a lot of buyers in the market right now um, competing for limited inventory that's out there. Yeah, what is the inventory at? Like we're recording this on uh, June 18th. So tell me what the inventory is looking like right now for you guys. Um, it's tight. It's tight for your entry level buyers. It's tight for someone who wants to downsize into a smaller property. Now, that being said, we're hearing anecdotally from our members. We just had a meeting yesterday with our research committee with um, realtors from across the country who are especially interested in research. And this is, you can't even collect data on it because it's really happening in real time. What they're telling us is that the inventory desire for people has absolutely changed with COVID. So they used to see the luxury, beautiful condo buildings in downtown city centers that those are in hot demand. Now they're having a harder time moving those. And the properties that they're really having a high demand for is someplace in the suburbs, someplace that has a yard, someplace where you can spread out, have your home office or two home offices or three perhaps for your kids to share one. Um, and we're really seeing that those types of properties are in hot demand now. So we're in a very quickly changing market. For sure. You know, I think it's a, um, I think it was a survey from Lending Tree. Um, not too long ago that actually addressed that issue about people um, wanting to move to the suburbs. Like that is that is a big kind of not a mass exodus here from cities, but people I think feeling safer um, in those areas where we're not seeing as high of uh, an infection rate with the COVID-19. So uh, that's, that's really fascinating. What, you know, you mentioned technology and um, a lot has changed. We, we keep, we could press on that point forever. So much has changed, but how much of the technology differences have we seen that you think are actually going to stick around and will be part of this moving forward? So there's a lot of really cool tools that are out there. Um, and I'm not going to name company names, but the idea that you can almost be in the home without physically stepping foot in the home, I think people are going to embrace that. Um, it can be expensive to list a home like that, I understand, but it's very cool technology. And it really can transform you to that location. Um, and especially if people are thinking about moving from a city center, moving into a suburban area, and they don't necessarily have the time to travel an hour out, go and tour that area, they really can't embrace that. Something that we saw very quickly is that um, when we ask our realtors, did you have a client who put a contract on a home in the last week? 
what we've seen is about a quarter of those buyers will need to sell that home virtually. And so that is a quick embrace of these types of technologies where buyers do feel comfortable saying, this is something that I would like to buy, I can see it, and let's put a contract on it. The idea of that, even six months ago, buying a house kind of sight unseen, like not being able to step in and feel um, what the house is for you, that's huge. And because I think part of that is spurred by the competition too. I mean, competition is extreme right now. It is. And so what we have seen historically is that people look at about a dozen homes before they put a contract down. The whole idea of these TV shows where you only look at three homes and then you put a contract on, and they were kind of a joke in the past, right? Like no one does that. You can't, you can't do this and then move in on Monday over a weekend. Um, but now we're actually kind of seeing that it's closer to reality. People are actually only looking at three homes before they put a contract down. That is pretty mind blowing to see how quickly the real estate market has transformed. How are realtors reacting to that? I, I'm so curious, from, I know it from the mortgage loan officer standpoint, right? How are you seeing your realtors and people in your organization reacting to that and, and ways they're changing their mindset on how this all works? Yeah, absolutely. So we always knew that our members were ahead of the curve when it comes to technology. Um, we even have technology reports that we put out. They have a very cool IOI conference. It's all about technology. There's all kinds of technology that realtors embrace on a daily basis, but I would say that they have absolutely upped their game. So they are competing among themselves to just be better every day and try and embrace these new tools. So even if they're coming into the home physically, they want to make sure that everyone stays safe in that process. And so everyone's wearing masks and gloves and foot covers, but they're also doing things that's very interesting. They're actually opening doors and windows and limiting traffic to just two people in the home. So they, they really are changing the way that they do they practice real estate. And a lot of that stuff I think will stick around um, for quite some time. And, and you and I were talking before we started recording, looking at where we are now with the economies reopening, but then also at this point in time when we're recording, we're starting to see increases and in upticks in cases as well. So do you feel part of this is because like this Russian home buying is due to the idea of a second wave of the pandemic or uh, you know, a second wave of shutdowns? It very well could be the case. And so we are actually surveying consumers on this and they are saying that they do feel some urgency to get out there. They were already, they had been out there shopping for homes. They paused their home search process. Now they're jumping back into the market. I mean, part of it could be, we've all been at home for about three months. And so even if you were really not even thinking about buying a home, you suddenly are saying, whoa, I am probably gonna fast forward this transaction. I need more yard space. I need that home office. But also, you know, I can do so much to DIY these home changes and make this home okay for me. But there is a certain point where you just might need more space. So people could be saying, I got stuck here another three months to six months, who knows? I got to get this change happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I'm looking at my kitchen cabinets right now and thinking that exact same thing. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, um, I fall into uh, two categories for you guys, right? A single female homeowner as well as a millennial. I'm 35 years old, so I'm on that like outer edge of, of being a millennial. Who are the demographics that are buying right now? Is, is, am, I, am I the, the one or like who is buying? Who, do we, who is you know, getting into the market right now with a fervor. Yes. So it is you, honestly. So <laughs> what we do see is that the largest segment of buyers today are millennials. And we have to always remember too that millennials range from their mid-20s, about 25 to almost 40 years old. So that's a really big spectrum of buyers. Um, and they all have different needs. What's really interesting about the buyers today, especially the first time home buyers, I think that their households become very interesting because we have a rise in unmarried couples buying together. We have a rise in roommates who are buying together. So at least they're not quarantining alone. Um, but we've seen this over the last couple of years where these different demographics are changing. Some of that has to do with affordability. It's really hard for a single female, props to you, um, to be able to buy a home by yourself because of down payments, um, how expensive it is to really get into home ownership. So uh, partnering up with a friend who we're already renting with, why not? Um, you guys can have a, some sort of contract that's in place about who owns what. Um, but we're seeing that change too. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about, you know, roommates just going and saying, hey, why don't we just buy a house? Because I know um, I live in the uh, suburb of Charlotte, North Carolina. 
and that is where Movement Mortgage is based. And you know, I can tell you right now, rent uh, where I live is incredibly high, um, and my mortgage was much less than than what I was renting something similar for. So um, that that's an interesting thing. How many are you seeing more? Uh, renters now like trying to move into the home buying space, especially with, with what we're dealing with with the pandemic? So I'm definitely hearing that anecdotally, we're seeing a lot of renters who are actually moving back to mom and dad's place if they can swing it and saying, I'm going to move out of the city center or a dense apartment type of living where I have an elevator and I'm going to move into mom and dad's place. I'll be able to save money, cut down on my expenses and save for my down payment. And so this could be the opportunity to find it's not like you're missing out on going out. You can't really go out as much, right? So um, this is the time to do it if you're going to think about things like that. So we are seeing this shift, but we already saw this shift in this mass exodus when we think about uh, New York City, uh, Boston, D.C. A lot of people moved back with mom and dad. So if you can cut the rent equation out of that, that could be a good time to save. One of the other big factors is the fact that you can get a mortgage for less than a 3% interest rate right now, which I mean, I, I, I've been following this the last couple of years, um, interest rates, even two years ago, were what in the five sixes. And, and now you can and hit that under three. Um, that is a, a big market mover, obviously. How much is that playing into what you're seeing and, and how realtors maybe are changing the way they're, they're marketing home buying? Yeah, that's huge. And you can buy so much more home for your money and when you have that low interest rate, um, especially when you know that you're going to lock that in for 30 years um, and really take advantage of the fact that that gives you so much more growth. It gives you wealth benefits while building, uh, the ability to build a nest egg. And that's really what we have seen as uh, how Americans really do build their wealth. It's the number one way to do that. We're bad savers, but we're really good at paying our mortgage. Uh, once we have that in hand. You know, I think that also um, on the negative side of it has played into a little bit of the inventory issue because now the inventory issue is kind of complex, right? Because low interest rates are great. People are refinancing, but that also means people aren't moving. And typically people would be moving and giving up that existing home. So existing homes are an issue. And then you had construction stalling a little bit. So new homes under construction were an issue and uh, we can't replace that inventory fast enough. Uh, what other headwinds or is there maybe some positive light with, with inventory? What is, what is a complicated issue with inventory right now? Yeah, it is very complicated because people did lock in those low interest rates um, and we've actually seen that the tenure in home, owning a home has increased to 10 years. And it used to be that people would move every six to seven years, something in their life would change. Maybe a new baby, a marriage, divorce, um, and they needed to actually move to accommodate that life change. Right now, we're just seeing that people are staying in place. They're transforming their homes in different ways for their home to accommodate their new living situation. I do think, though, that with COVID, as people are staying in their homes 24-7, that that'll loosen up some of that inventory. People will really start rethinking uh, where they're living, who they're living with, perhaps, uh, um, and we may see some changes coming up. You know, the, the second half of that, looking at demographics, is, you know, my parents' generation. So my parents are both uh, late 60s, early 70s. Um, they're not moving, you know? And, and typically, that would have been um, a, a couple that would have decided, you know what, this house is, we don't need this anymore. We'll downsize to a two-bedroom home. That is also seemingly not happening. Do you, do you see that, too? Yes. Downsizing for space is very passe. People don't do it anymore. Um, we used to see it back in the 90s, but people would downsize and they downsize about 500, 600 square feet. Um, but today we just don't see it. And even if you, your typical repeat buyer is actually in their mid 50s. They used to be traditionally in their mid 30s. Um, so they've moved up this life cycle change into a much later age. Often this mid 50 year old who's, who's moving, they have kids under the age of 18. They could be buying this multi-generational home where they have aging parents there as well. Well, um, that they're taking care of. And so they suddenly need more space. They want more space to accommodate all these individuals, but also because they don't want to necessarily get rid of their stuff and they want the space and they want the ability to perhaps host for Thanksgiving. So this is a different type of buyer than we have seen in the past. For somebody who is a um, first time home buyer or somebody who's maybe even just now like buying a second home or anything like that, um, with the inventory issue, but with these low interest rates, um, what is the best 
way to attack that for people. What are some things, just some basic tips on getting into real estate, buying a home that people um, need to be educated about right now and how they can best do that in this environment? Yeah, absolutely. So you want to know how much you can afford, obviously. So that's, that's probably your step number one is trying to figure that out. Uh, so talking to your mortgage broker, trying to understand that. But you probably have a realtor who you've either worked with in the past before you had a good relationship with, so reach out to them. Um, and if you don't, contact your friends and family because they have a recommendation for you to use a good realtor. Um, and that's the number one way that people do find a realtor. Do your research, do your homework, understand right now we are in this crazy time. And so know that the experience that you have is probably going to be different than perhaps even someone who bought a year ago and just roll with it. It's going to be, it's going to be different. There's going to be some new hurdles um, where patience is really going to be key. You know, when I went to the home buying experience last year, I was lucky to work for a mortgage company, right? So I had a little bit of inside knowledge, but on the realtor side of it, I didn't realize I didn't have to uh, necessarily quote unquote pay for that. The, the buyer's agent was working with me and, and working on my behalf, which I thought was a really neat thing that I was like, oh, okay, cool. That's a, that's a nice little plus. And, and she's become a friend of mine. I ask her for recommendations all the time and got my fence put in. So um, yeah, taking advantage of that, I think is, is a really important thing to to get to know um, what you can afford and, and what you need to be looking at. So um, I guess any tips now, Jessica, for uh, loan originators who are listening to this podcast and working with realtor partners and um, really trying to make that relationship stronger because we're in two different worlds sometimes <laughs> when it comes to the job. So um, what is one way maybe anybody who's in the loan origination side can better work with realtors and, 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 and help people go through this process? Yeah, I mean, everywhere is different right now, just with openings. Um, and so I think just knowing to have patience through the process, keep that open communication going, um, even though everyone likes to rely on text and to pick up the phone, have a chat, people are missing people right now too. So um, I do think that it is a complicated process just with online notarization and e-closing documents and things like that. So it is a different process today. Um, and everyone's just trying to stay healthy and well rested as much as we all can. So um, do try and take care of yourselves because I know that everyone is really busy in the real estate world right now. Incredibly busy, incredibly busy, which is a blessing and a burden at the same time. <laughs> so happy to do it. Dr. Louts, thank you so much for being on today in the Mortgage Impact Podcast. I'd love to have you on again at some time and really dive into some of these demographics. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. This was great.